Flakes are flying for the drive home. Find out how much of this is going to actually stick. Karen? Breaking news. Has President Trump done anything worth impeachment? What these four people are saying this afternoon will help determine the next step. Here at home, Kid Rock controversy. His restaurant at Little Caesars Arena will close that decision days after he slammed Oprah. What both sides are saying about the announcement. Hey, Paula. Hi, Karen. So imagine your hands being frostbitten so badly they're frozen solid around the oars of your boat. And now imagine being able to turn this into this. When you see what this man can do. These stories and more are happening right now on Local 4 First at Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. First at four, we're following breaking news right now as Detroit police investigate this deadly hit and run on the city's west side. We're told a woman was hit while trying to cross Telegraph at McNichols late this afternoon. Now that we understand the driver did not stop, but police got the plate and now have her in custody and questioning. Police say the don't walk sign was red. The driver had the green light, but she could still be in trouble for driving away. The scene is just cleared. We will have a live update tonight at five. It has been a long day for UAW leaders working on that new contract with Fiat Chrysler. Right now, they are behind closed doors trying to decide if the deal should go to the rank and file. The UAW leadership has touted the deal for offering gains around salaries, benefits, and job security. Now, if they give the green light, the membership would start voting Friday. We've got a crew outside that meeting. We will bring you updates as soon as they are available. At this hour, mourners are starting to honor Detroit police officer Rasheen McLean, who was killed in the line of duty. Take a look. These are some live pictures of today's visitation at Fisher Funeral Home in Redford. We'll actually try to bring those to you a little bit later. As we know, McLean was shot to death late last month. The visitation opened to the public until 8 o'clock this evening. Funeral services for Officer McLean will be held this Friday at the Greater Grace Temple, and that starts at 11 in the morning. First at four, we do have a local four update on the shooting of a mother and her very small child. It happened last night on Freeland near McNichols. Right now, we're told the 23 year old mom remains hospitalized in critical condition after being shot multiple times. Her one month old daughter was grazed by a bullet and is at Children's Hospital this afternoon. On social media, family members are optimistic that both will be okay. New at five, police are talking about a person of interest they hope will contact police. We're going to take a closer look at the investigation this evening. Rock star Kid Rock reacting to the news that the restaurant bearing his name will no longer have a home at Little Caesars Arena. The decision follows his drunken rant against Oprah Winfrey that went viral. First, here's part of the statement from Illich Holdings saying, quote, Kid Rock has voluntarily decided not to renew his licensing agreement. And as our venues are open, inviting and inclusive and respectful to all, we look forward to bringing on an exciting new concept that aligns with our community and company values. Meantime, Kid Rock posted on Facebook saying he, quote, learned long ago, go where you're celebrated, not tolerated. I guess the millions of dollars I dumped into that town was not enough. You can read the entire statement at clickondetroit.com. Another great day outside. Some of uh, you could see some snow showers as well. Ben Bailey standing by with the very latest. So where do things stand, Ben? Yeah, Karen, it looks like that snow is really starting to expand there in the north and west zones. So some of our big traveled highways, 23 north of Ann Arbor and 75 once you get north of Auburn Hills, that's where we're seeing some of these snow showers. Now, even though we're not anticipating a whole lot in the way of accumulation, these are just going to be swirling around. But this time of day, especially with the uh, volume of travel on some of these highways, could be really slow slowing things down. Maybe some minor dustings uh, in some spots, but it should be off of the pavement. Temperatures are going to fall to around the freezing mark by 10 o'clock, but we should be seeing an end of the flakes here uh, just before the sunset time frame and then dry conditions overnight. We've got one more shot of snow to look at before the sunshine finally arrives and also some warmer temperatures. Find out if we get close to 50 in the seven day forecast coming up. Karen. 
Well, we've heard the witnesses and seen evidence. Today, Congress called the constitutional experts to explain what impeachment really means and if President Trump has committed acts worthy of impeachment. At this point, Democrats have the upper hand. Let's get to Devin Skillian for key moments of the hearing, which is still going on. Devin. It does help when you control the hearing, of course, Karen. Four scholars were invited to testify, three chosen by Democrats, all favoring impeachment. The fourth, invited by the Republican side, could not say that President Trump did anything, uh, did nothing wrong but instead argued the process hadn't gone deep enough and shouldn't be done this way. We have a record of conflicts, defenses that have not been fully considered, unsubpoenaed witness with material evidence. To impeach a president on this record would expose every future president to the same type of inchoate impeachment. On the basis of the testimony and the evidence before the House, President Trump has committed impeachable high crimes and misdemeanors by corruptly abusing the office of the presidency. Opening statements have been followed by questions, parliamentary maneuvers, plenty of partisan finger pointing. The president was, has been at the NATO summit in London as the hearing started. He kept up his assault on the whole process. Frankly, uh, it's a bad thing for the country. I'm over here with NATO. We're meeting with, in this case, Italy, but we're meeting with great countries. Very important countries. We're doing a good job. Of course, just, this is just another step, really, in the impeachment process. If it moves forward, the Judiciary Committee would draft the articles of impeachment. Then it would go to the full House for a vote. Uh, as you can see, these four witnesses still being question, questioned. Here's uh, live pictures from Washington being questioned by the committee. Hearing started at 10 this morning, and it continues. And if you'd like to watch it, it is being streamed right now on ClickOnDetroit.com. And Karen, of course, we'll have an update coming up here on Local 4 News at 5 and plenty of coverage from NBC on Nightly News at 6.30. Karen. To you. All right. Thank you, Devin. Like many family photos, this video of NATO leaders standing together can cover up those problems behind the scenes. President Trump reacting to this viral video right there. Now, it looked like key allies, including Justin Trudeau of Canada, were talking about President Trump. They don't mention him by name, but they are heard complaining about someone being late because of lengthy press conferences. Meantime, the president blames disagreements over NATO payments. Well, he's too fast. And honestly, with Trudeau, he's a nice guy. I, I find him to be a very nice guy. But, you know, the truth is that uh, I called him out on the fact that he's not paying 2%. And I guess he's not very happy about it. Last night, I made a reference to the fact that uh, there was an unscheduled press conference uh, before my meeting with uh, President Trump. And I was happy to take part of it. Uh, but it was certainly notable. President. President Trump is headed home now after canceling a news conference scheduled for this morning. Closer to home, take a look at these carvings. They're part of the road to recovery for a man who lost the use of his fingers to frostbite. Still, he is able to bring life to the birds that he used to hunt. We find Paula Tutman in Gross Eel this afternoon to show us this incredible feat of the hands. Paula. Hey, Karen, so I want you to think about the last time your hands were super, super cold and it was just hard to move your fingers. And now I want you to multiply that by about a gazillion. And then I want you to marvel at what this man is able to do. Ken Wagle carves his incredible birds and remembers what brought him to the craft. A story that would be tragic to some, but for him, brought him to this. We are duck hunting off of um, the south end of Grozeal. Note the fingers that carve the wood, swollen, misshapen, stiff with the damage of six and a half hours adrift in the icy grip of a winter storm. The motor froze up. We broke an oar lock and six and a half hours later we ended up south of Amitsburg on the ice. It was a big story in the papers, two duck hunters cheating death caught on the ice where the Detroit River feeds into Lake Erie. They had to cut the clothes off of us because wow. it was all ice. It was just frozen around right up. What happened to your fingers? It, they turned black, absolutely black. And the surgery they use is just stripping the skin off until it, they get past it. They were damaged, curled. So the tendons were damaged. But, and I can't make a fist. My boxing career was over. He was told he might get some dexterity back into his fingers if he tried wood carving. The bird I'm going to work on a little bit is this woodcock. To exercise his damaged hands. 50 years later, 
He says he is not disabled, but instead has become super abled in a style of wood carving and burning so intricate the more than 50 varieties of birds he carves actually seem to be alive. Now I'm doing the outline of this feather and I'm doing it real slow so that the, the pen is making it real dark. The next row I'll do will be a little faster and it'll change the tone. His days of duck hunting are over. His work is now bringing them to life with an incredible ability forever frozen into his fingers. You know, I've gotten so used to it that I don't even think about it anymore, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's really remarkable. So his work is exclusively for sale at a store in Wyandotte called Abundant Living. That's actually where I discovered him. Um, but his wife and I today cobbled together a Facebook page so our audience can actually reach out to him. Karen, the detail is incredible. It actually feels like feathers, and he's doing it with these hands. Beautiful work. Thank you, Paula. Still ahead, a workplace struggle for women forced to wear high heels, contacts instead of glasses. We'll show you where they're fighting back. And candles, Coke bottles, and toilet paper, a disturbing discovery in a surprising place. Why one homeowner is stepping up security today. First, mixed emotions after another rescue in Australia's outback. Not everyone is home safe tonight. We'll be right back, but first, we've got some breaking news we told you about at the top of the hour. This from the UAW. The UAW FCA Leadership Council has just decided to send the new four-year contract to the membership for a vote. Ratification process will start this Friday, December 6th. Business editor Rob Maloney is on the story for you and has reaction live at 5. We'll be right back. French fry crisis? Why is America facing a severe French fry shortage? Next, Inside Edition. Coming up next on Local 4. What happened to Jimmy Hoffa? Now, hear from the people who knew him. A story about power and control. Hoffa, tonight at 10 on Local 4.